Hello friends and family of YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. I decided to make this video to update you guys on how I'm doing with my recovery from my surgery and also kind of give you guys updates on my plan for getting back on the Appalachian Trail and also answer questions that you guys had for me that I uh, had asked on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I will put my handle right here. A lot of times I will put the little question box on there. You guys can ask me questions and I also do more real-time updates if you care to get those about my life so all that being said I am sitting in my van I'm in my driveway and my road in front of my house is noisy so I hope that doesn't um, annoy you guys because it's really annoying me but anyway I'm really excited I'm feeling a lot better one of the number one questions I got was how are you feeling? And I'm feeling a lot, a lot better. The recovery has gone great. Uh, the doctor told me at the time of the surgery that I should just have a two week recovery. I didn't believe him at the time. And that was of course if everything went perfect. And so far, knock on wood, everything's perfect. I haven't had any complications. I've really been trying to stay on top of my nutrition, eating really healthy, taking vitamins, supplements, eating healthy proteins, complex carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, all those things. And then also staying as active as I can. Of course, I'm taking it slow starting back out, but I'm also listening to my body and pushing myself a little bit to see kind of where I'm at as far as if I'm ready to get back on trail. So I went on an eight mile trip with my pack yesterday and it felt amazing. So I really think that I am ready to get back out there. A lot of people have told me like, don't take it too fast, listen to your body. And no one knows my body better than I know my body. And guys, that whole thing shook me up. That was a scary experience. So I promise you I'm not going to go back out there before I'm ready because I don't ever want to go through anything like that ever again, not even remotely close, because that whole experience was tragic to say the least. So no worries there. Um, I do have all the questions that you guys asked me, so I'm going to try to stay on track here. So how are you doing? And then, okay, people were asking, you know, are you going to start where you left off? What's your plan for getting back on the Appalachian Trail? So I am going to meet up with my family, my trail family, and um, I, I know where that is. I'm not going to say exactly where I'm going back to the AT and when and what time. It's just like when I started for safety purposes. You guys will know eventually because I'll talk about it in my vlogs. But for now, I do have a plan in place. I had to get there, where I'm going to start, all that stuff. So everything is taken care of the day I'm just waiting for the time to get in the car and go out there. So I'm really excited about that. Then I'm gonna just keep walking to Maine and once I get to Maine, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna have like maybe 150 to 200 miles that I missed, which is just gonna hang over me the entire time I'm out there, I already know. But I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna do that after I get to Maine and finish my through hike that way. Do I have a trail name yet? No, I do not have a trail name yet. Um, yeah, I guess I need one. Hopefully we'll get one once I get back out there. Okay, a lot of people ask, any gear changes when you return to the trail? Yes, I have a few minor gear changes. Well, one major one, I did get a new sleeping bag. I actually got a quilt. And so coming back, I am really trying to get my pack as light as I can get it just because of the surgery and where my pack sits my incisions are like probably two inches below where my pack sits so it's a kind of a lot of pressure on that area which I'm trying to alleviate as much as possible and so the week that I was out there I hated my sleeping bag it's a Kelty mummy bag and the way I sleep I don't I don't like feeling compressed. I wanted to like lay in bed and stretch my legs and I just couldn't do it. And the sleeping bag, it's weird. The zipper, like it kind of like goes around. It's not one of those that just goes straight down. The zipper kind of like goes and like twists around the back. I don't know. I it was annoyed with it the whole time. So that was one of the first things I did when I got home. I ordered a new quilt, but I won't have that by the time I get back out there because it takes like four to six weeks 
but I will definitely show you guys that quilt talk about it when I do get it on trail I'll probably just have my mom ship it to me that's probably like the main gear change that I got I'm switching out my fleece line leggings for some wool leggings I got some new socks I did get a new pair of shoes so I was wearing ultras Lone Peak 4s, they were the uh, like high top. It's so weird because I've been on backpacking trips with Ultras, that's my second pair, I've never had a problem. Once you get on the AT and you get in that terrain and you're hiking 10 to 13 miles a day, you're really gonna know if your shoes work for you. And those shoes were killing my Achilles. Ultras are known for having zero drop. So zero drop is the foot just sits flat. Most shoes have like a eight millimeter to 12 millimeter rise on the heel. And so they're a little different in that sense. And that can put a lot of strain on your Achilles if your calf muscle isn't strong enough. And if your Achilles just isn't used to being stretched that way. And it was putting a lot of strain on mine. Ended up getting a new pair of hiking shoes. I went with some Adidas. Oh, I forget what they're called. Terrell, Terrell, something. I'll put it here. And I like them so far. I've been on a few shakedown hikes with them. But again, like I'm really going to know within the first week if uh, I, they actually work. Now the neighbor's mowing. This is why I can never get anything done. I hate living in the city. How am I liking my new pack? So for those of y'all who have been watching my videos, I switched out my pack last minute. I had an Osprey Wren 65 liter and I switched it out for a Waymark light pack. It's a 50 liter. And oh my goodness, I could not be happier with that switch. First of all, it took um, two, almost three pounds off my base weight. Y'all, those Osprey framed packs are heavy. I could not believe after wearing that pack, I came back home, picked up my Osprey, I'm like, man, this thing's heavy. Uh, the main difference between, the main obvious difference between the two packs is the Osprey is a framed pack and the Waymark is a non-framed pack. So I was a little worried about that because I had never used the Waymark on a single hike. I'd literally just packed it and walked around my house with it because I got it a week before I set out on trail. So I was worried that it wouldn't work, I wouldn't be comfortable, but it turns out it's so comfortable, it's so light, and I love it. It just forms to my body because of the frameless. I put my sleeping bag on the bottom and then just put like my clothes on the top and just I have my like little method of packing it. Honestly, with my surgery, like I said, that pack sits right above about two inches from where my incisions were. And I actually have an incision on my belly button, which is right around where was my hip bones are really high. So that's right around where the pack sits. And it's so soft and just molds to my body. It just, I don't think the Osprey would have been as comfortable, especially after surgery, because it's more of a rigid pack and the Waymark just kind of form fits your body like a glove. I love that pack. I really am grateful that I ended up switching and it's been probably my favorite piece of gear since I've been out on the trail so far. If y'all are interested in switching from a framed to a frameless pack, I highly recommend that Waymark Light Pack. It's actually an introductory pack to frameless packs from people going to frame to frameless. That's what it's advertised as on their website and it can hold a base weight up to 18 pounds and then like 30 pounds comfortably. When I started the AT, I was at 31.25 pounds and the pack felt great. Yesterday on my shakedown hike, I really tried to load my pack down just to see, you know, how I felt. So I'm guessing there was about 32 and a half pounds of weight in that backpack and I felt great. So really good pack and I'll leave a link at the bottom in my description if you guys want to check that backpack out. Favorite trail food so far on trail? Hands down my favorite food to eat on trail is the Trader Joe's dried mangoes. Oh my gosh they're so good. They're a good little glucose source. I would eat them like I have a big climb coming up and I'll just like pop a few of those in my mouth while I'm walking up the mountain I'm like yeah this isn't so bad. <laughs> they're so good. So I did go to Trader Joe's the other day and stocked up on those, so I'm excited. Yes, I will still be going Nobo. 
my plan is to go Nobo. I already kind of talked about this, but I'll be keeping going Nobo to Maine. And then I'm gonna flip back down to where I'm coming back out to start. And I wanna walk back down and finish my through hike at Low Gap where it all kind of ended at Hogpen Gap. And I feel like that'll just tie everything together and be like a nostalgic moment. Like, yeah, I was in so much pain, lying on the ground, rolling around. And now, you know, I hiked the whole thing. Hopefully, my goodness. Okay, so a lot of people asked how I got into backpacking and how they can prepare for a potential through hike in the future. And this is a really good question. Getting into backpacking, my friends and I one day decided we were gonna hike the 12 mile loop at Pettyjean. And it did that 12, 12 mile loop and we rented a camp spot um, near the, you know, in the state park and we went back and camped there. And I was like, how cool would it be to hike even farther and then, you know, camp out in the woods? So that's when I started getting into backpacking and then uh, eventually found the AT and I was like, yeah, I definitely want to do that. And so this is all while I was still in college and y'all backpacking gear ain't cheap. Now you can go to Walmart and probably get you a whole set up for a hundred dollars, but <laughs> it's probably going to be really, really heavy. I was in college and I didn't have very much money. I was working like four part-time jobs. And so it took me dang near for years to get everything I needed to go backpacking. But luckily the university that I went to had a like program thing where you could check out backpacking gear for free if you're a student. And so I did that for a long time, did a lot of research. So if you're planning on through hiking or backpacking, don't just buy the first thing that you see. I mean, every piece of gear that I bought probably had two months of research behind it. And I would just, good place to start is just to get on REI and start looking at tents, backpacks, um, sleeping bags, and going through and looking at the specs, looking at the weight, the material. I went to my local library and got a book and just read it and it just talked all about backpacking, like the different materials, uh, synthetic versus down, Dyneema, you know, all that type of stuff that you just, you just, you know, starting out, you're not, you don't really know about. And so I did that. And then I watched a lot of YouTube. I found people who were through hiking and you can learn so much from just watching them on their journey and what they do. And everybody, you know, always have to remember hike your own hike. So what works for me might not work for you and might not work for him. So you got to kind of find what you want as far as comfort, as far as weight, as far as price. Played a huge decision in the gear that I chose initially. So I would say from like my first set of backpacking gear, when I was all set, had everything I needed to go backpacking, I've upgraded almost every single piece of gear since I've been on trail. Like I made a gear video back in February and I've dang near upgraded almost every single piece of gear. And you can totally do, I could have totally done the trail with all that gear. Um, however, when you get out there, it's like, man, I really don't want to spend $400 on a sleeping bag. But then you get out there and you're living in that thing every night. And you got to think like, okay, if I want to walk to Maine, I'm going to be out there for six months. So you want something that's quality. You want something that you're comfortable in. You want something that's going to work for you. And so I got other questions like what are the best trail shoe? I can't tell you that. Shoes are different all along the line. So I would, for shoes, I would go to an outfitter, have them assess your feet, your gait, your arch, all that stuff, and put you in the right shoe because what works for me probably isn't gonna work for you. Same thing with backpacks. One of the first things I did before I bought a backpack is I went to REI and I tried on like five or six different backpacks and I had the gear person like, show me how to put it on, show me how to adjust it. And then from there, I you know went home, did more research, and kind of figured out what I thought would work best for me. And it's a trial and error thing. I suggest REI because you can buy stuff there. They have a great return policy. You can even use this, the piece of gear, and if it doesn't work out for you, you can return it. So REI is a great place to start. I bought a lot of stuff on on Amazon as well. They have you know the cheaper options sometimes and they've got pretty good return policy as well. So yeah, I mean, I would just start there, do your research and slowly get your pieces of gear and 
hold out on some stuff too because I got a lot of my stuff on sale. I would just wait because REI has a big sale every year. I can't remember when, a couple times a year. And you can sometimes get stuff for pretty a lot cheaper um, when those sales are going on. And then too, if you're serious about through hiking, go on some backpacking trips before you get out there. I was so surprised my first week just talking to people in the shelter who had never been on a backpacking trip ever in their life. I mean, the terrain makes such a difference. Rocks, roots, dirt, inclines. I mean, my best advice to you is to go on a bunch of backpacking trips before you get out on the trail, and that way you don't have any huge surprises. Someone asked if I had any symptoms prior to my little episode on trail and this is speaking to all the women out there that are watching my uh, video right now not really honestly now looking back yeah there were some a few things that i'm thinking now that might were probably warning signs so for the past like year i felt pretty bloated my stomach is normally pretty flat i eat pretty healthy i'm very active i do crossfit and stuff and i was like why am i steadily gaining weight and feeling bloated all the time. And it was because I had an eggplant sized cyst in my stomach. And some other, I think, warning factors were just like abnormal, ab more abnormalities around that time of the month. Very subtle, not something where I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go to the doctor. But I think where I really messed up and could have done better in this whole situation was staying up to date with my yearly appointment with the gynecologist. I have before all this and I just went to get cleared or whatever but I hadn't been since 2017 and I was like man I don't need to go to that like whatever I just would always like shove it under the rug like I don't need to go you need to go uh, there the, the lady told me because they poke on your stomach and like feel around where your ovaries are they definitely would have found the that huge cyst had I been going regularly and it's just very important for a lot of other reasons even if you're not sexually active you know you still need to go and get checked out because our reproductive system is such a huge part of our makeup male and female and they produce a lot of hormones and you know obviously can be a pretty big threat if you don't take care of it so go to your yearly appointments this is me being an advocate i'm never going to miss another one and if you have any abnormalities that just whatever i mean it's it can never hurt to go talk to your doctor and ask about it do you have any concerns about the level of activity on the at in your recovery like i said at the beginning of the video i would be lying to y'all if i told you i wasn't a little scared to go back out there because this whole experience has shook me up for me, I'm just putting my trust in the Lord and I know that he's going to be there with me every step of the way and get, you know, if I do face another, you know, God forbid, if I face another experience like that on trail, like I know I'm going to be okay because I was okay the last time. And if I'm not, then I know where I'm going when I die. So, you know, I'm just going to go out there with no worries and no fears as much as I can. I feel like that's something through all of this that God's been teaching me is just to trust him through every situation because I can sit here and I can worry, oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? But what good does that really do me? I'm just sitting here wasting my life. So I'm gonna focus on enjoying the present moment. I really wanna say thank you to everybody who's prayed for me. Like I seriously felt those prayers and I know they've helped me so much. There's power in prayer. I, you, you can't make me think any different. So. Please continue to keep me in your prayers. If you need me to pray for you, definitely let me know. I had a lot of people message me on Instagram. I've been trying to keep up, but just kind of sharing their story with me. And I promise when I tell you that I'm, I, I will pray for you, I do. And um, it's just cool that I have a community of brothers and sisters out there um, in Christ who are kind of supporting me and praying for me throughout this experience and I can never say thank you enough to you guys so thank you thank you thank you okay guys well I think that's a, gonna do it for the question so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned because I will be back on trail very soon so updates more updates on that to come and I can't wait so 
I will see you guys soon. Thank you.